Hello, my name is Clara Maveglia and I founded a Cultural Entrepreneurship Institute in Berlin. Today I am in Stockholm at the Royal College of Music. My guest is Stefan Scheyer. He is a professor and a vice principal here, but he is also a pianist, a real virtuoso. Welcome to our community, Mr. Scheyer. Nice that you found the time. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Stefan Scheyer. I'm born in Sweden concert pianist from the beginning, nowadays also a professor here at the Royal College of Music in Stockholm, where we are right now. And the last couple of years I'm also the, the vice principal of the whole school. This is a school not only for classical music, we have jazz, we have folk music, we have, uh, yeah, you name it, we have it here. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but um, of course, um, I could complete it now talking for hours about uh, your career, and we have now a little time to talk about that uh, because you are a real virtuoso. And um, I really would like to ask you first uh, what influenced you in your career? Well, I tell you, I, I was born with talent and passion uh, as a young kid, I had very good parents that understood my needs. I, I came to good teachers, which was very, very important uh, when I was a young man, 10 or 12 years old. Um, and I studied here in Stockholm with this teacher who was wonderful until I was 18. I then came to, to Juilliard School in New York. I was accepted there, studying with the great Russian uh, pianists of those days. It was a wonderful time. And Juilliard, of course, is the the Harvard of, of, of music schools, you know. So I had a very inspiring <coughs> time and I stayed on in New York for many years. I won some big competitions and my career started to take, to take off. And uh, since then I've been touring all over the world um, uh, as a soloist and as a chamber mus musician and uh, the past 15 years since I came back to Sweden, I've been teaching and trying to um, to convey my, my experience and my knowledge to, to, to young, stu talented students. It's a wonderful thing. This is wonderful to be able to combine uh, concertizing and then and, uh, and give some knowledge to the uh, next generation. Mm -hmm. What fascinates you especially in this position, in the position um, both as a, can you go a bit deeper, uh, describe a bit to, so that we can understand how is your day here at the, uh, with all these um, appointments and you need so much energy, so yeah, much pressure, yeah. but at the same time you find then time to concentrate on your uh, playing. Yes, How does so it work? It's, yes. Sometimes it's difficult, I must say. Of course, with age, I've learned to, to be disciplined. When I do practice, when I do have an hour for myself, I think I work more efficiently with this hour than if I had a whole day free. You know, that's how it is. So a tight schedule, you can really um, discipline yourself in, in a very good manner, I think. And I, at the center is the love of music, you know. If I practice, I, I associate with the great masters every day, from Bach to our, our times. This is a wonderful companionship, you know, to, to be, have a conversation with Mozart and Beethoven and Chopin, of course. And to then to, to try and give some knowledge of this, my experience, to, to these young, talented kids. It's, it's, I learn a lot from it because sometimes, then I have to verbalize my ideas. Why do I do what I do? And I have to really <laughs> think about that for myself, of course. Uh. It's, it's a very good process. I think it, it gives me a lot of uh, knowledge about myself, actually. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, you usually hear something like that music touches your soul. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, Music also communicates in a way that you cannot really describe with words. Would you anyway try to describe this using words? Because we are communicating. Well, to now to reach this undercurrent, the yeah. poetry of music, uh, <clears throat> first of all, I think that we have to really try and find out the intentions of the composer. 
you know, not to, to be true to the score, in a sense, to be true to the composer, to the best of our knowledge, and really work on every detail. I, now I'm t talking about from a technical standpoint, you know. Yes. Forget about the soul right now, because ah, okay. that comes later, I would think. But once you start to dig into the material, the construction of, of, a, of a great piece, all the little details, all the markings, all the phrasings, all the dynamics, the tempo, uh, and then put that into a, the style of, the, of, of those days when it was composed. Slowly but surely, you, you, you start to get under the skin of the composer and into this realm of soul, if you wish, soul or poetry or, or uh, transcendence. And then, of course, you mirror yourself in Beethoven. There is no, not one interpretation of Beethoven that is true, of course. You will put your mark on it. Uh, you will go hand in hand with Beethoven or Mozart or Bach or whoever it is. And I think th this, this um, work, this procedure is fascinating. Uh, and it takes time and you have to do it methodically. And you need the skills. You really need to be a good craftsman to do this, of course. You need the technique, you need the control and all this. Uh, but, um, this is what you build up for as an artist, I would think, to, 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 to refine your tools to be able to, to do this journey. And uh, it's a constant process, you know, it never ends. I'm never finished with an interpretation. I come back and back and I try, no, maybe I should do this instead. And that. So it's, it's a wonderful thing, there is no, never an end. So what influenced you then? Um, so you said um, you discover your talent, but how does this happen? When you were a child and so well, on? Well, I, I, I just, I was happy when I heard music. It made me happy and I didn't start with piano from the beginning. I played other instruments, but once I found the piano, this was for me. I could play the harmonies. I could, I could be in whole, whole orchestra, you know. So I knew this was my instrument. And I came to a local uh, teacher that, after a while, told my parents, oh, this boy has, you know, he, he's, he's got it. So she recommended me to, to a very fine professor, who, who, and I was only nine years old then. And he was a fantastic inspiration and a great role model for me. He, he gave me literature to read. He showed me paintings. He, he had a whole intellectual view of what art is. And, and I'm trying to convey this holistic view of what culture is. It's not picking out a score from the shelf. And you have to know when it was written, uh, what it was inspired by, uh, to get to know how people dressed, how they spoke, how they moved, you know, to be able to, to, to make this music justice. But he was a great inspiration for me, and um, uh, not only for music, for philosophy, for um, art, architecture. He, he was a, a great mentor in that sense. And, and that kind of um, uh, teaching that he gave me, I'm trying to pass on nowadays to my students. But uh, what, what made you decide to dedicate your life to the music? I was, I was lucky. I won some local competitions. I, I had people wanted me to play with the, the symphony orchestra. I made my debut here when I was 13 or 14 with the, with the Stockholm Philharmonic. And of course, I, it was scary and I didn't feel really up to it. But I had, I had goals. And I think that's a very important thing for young people to, to have something to look forward to, you know, smaller, bigger concerts uh, as a musician. You have to go out there and be in front of an audience and, and to com communicate. Mm. So, uh, and then I, I, uh, I really started to play a lot here uh, in my early teens and uh, then more and more abroad. And, that's how it happened for me. 
But what about the relationship between uh, talent and hard work? I mean, as a young boy. No, I, <coughs> but I tell you, t talent, it, it, once you start to open one door, you see there are so many other doors there. So it, I think talent, it, I, was, I was very keen on practicing. What I, not always. I was a young man, you know, I wanted to go out and play soccer. And, <laughs> uh, or so. But I, I did, I enjoyed practicing, and I still do actually. I, I, um, it's very therapeutic also, you know, it's, it's a very physical thing to, to play an instrument. There is evidence that uh, music improved the cognitive, but also the emotional intelligence. Uh, can you tell us about your experience? No, being a musician, you have to be in touch with your yourself, your own feelings, I guess. Like an actor, we have to go in and out of different roles. And I'm sure, unconsciously, we, we open up doors within ourselves in connection with a tragic piece by, by Beethoven or by Liszt, you know? Suddenly, it, it, there is something within you that it gets touched, you know. So, and, and great music has that whole emotional specter of, of human emotions and human wisdom. And, and, and the, the great artists, of course, are in touch with this, you know. But that only comes from really good craftsmanship. And that, that takes hours and hours and hours of practicing, of course. But do you have a special missile to pass on the spark to your students to inspire people or even to heal people? Because you said that music can be used also as a therapy. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a special method? Because of course students uh, or young people, they must be, you, you have to make them enthusiastic. Yeah. I, I, when I teach, you mean, or when I play concerts? Both. Yeah. No, yeah. So I, you make a difference. Yeah. This is also interesting. <laughs> no, but by t t when teaching, I'm trying to give them just what my teacher gave me to see a bigger, bigger picture. This music can also represent something else. This can represent nature or or a, a historical event or to get them to 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 see pictures in their head. You know. And, and through that way, maybe also reach their their inner inner emotions. And I think to communicate with with a larger audience, where possibly not everyone is is very knowledgeable. I think nowadays it's very important to to talk about um, classical music in in a, in a pedagogical way. You know, to describe, uh, to give a background. Uh, background to why this was composed, when it was composed, and I, I think you, there is a lot to do there with lecture recitals, very interesting um, uh, qualities can, can come to the listener then, you know, if, if, you, if you know more about what you're listening to. So I think we, musicians nowadays have responsibility to do this, also to be able to communicate verbally maybe to with an audience. Mm -hmm. So you are also the founder of the Gotland Chamber Music Festival. What motivated you to do this? And how does it work to found a successful <laughs> well, festival? Yeah. How do you do that? It, it, I, it, 30 years ago, <coughs> um, when I came back to Sweden really from, from New York, I was very, I loved playing chamber music. But uh, during the regular seasons, uh, in most large institutions, there are a very limited number of, of chamber music concerts. So I said, I wanted to create something that where I was the boss. And there is this wonderful island in the Baltic of uh, Sweden called Gotland. And I was there, I had a, a small recital in the summer. I said, oh, this is a perfect place for for a small chamber, kind of a jam session for classical musicians. You know, we get together, we eat, we have concerts, we rehearse, we have fun, we communicate. And uh, so that's where it started. It started in a, in a very small, uh, in a very small format. 
it's not very large nowadays either, but, but um, this is how it's, it's, I wanted to create a salon uh, in summertime um, in, in a beautiful milieu, and that's how it is. Uh, it's been up and down economically, you know, I'm, I'm dependent on, on, the, on the city, of course, and on, uh, on some fundraising efforts. But it's, it's still there, 30 years later. Oh, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. So you are a cultural entrepreneur. So please tell us why entrepreneurship is so important, especially in a cultural field or artistic field. Well, I think more and more also in, in, in academic institutions, this is part of the curriculum. Because there is not enough, it's not enough to, to just train young people to be good musicians. We have to train them also for a reality out there. And it doesn't, the reality doesn't look like it did 50 years ago, you know. Where uh, most kids, they could, could uh, uh, get employed in a big symphony orchestra, they could do this. There, there were jobs out there. Nowadays, the freelance market is much, much bigger. The diversity of, of musical expression is enormous. I and mean, there are so many different aspects of music. Uh, even classical music in itself, the, the modern classical music, it's very, very diverse and very um, uh, energetic nowadays, I think. But that also means that you, you can't be dependent on, on the, the, the former big institutions to give you employment. So, Freelance musicians nowadays, they have to create, create their own platforms, create their own um, jobs, if you will. Mm -hmm. But this is also a very creative process, I think, because the, uh, it forces young people now to think, in, in, uh, to think outside the box somehow. And mm -hmm. we, do, we have courses in this now here in, in, uh, in the college here. Mm -hmm. um, we have something called the arty business, oh. where we combine yeah, people who knows business, people who know uh, entrepreneurship, and we put them together with, with uh, people who know music, you know, and uh, things happen. I think the, the art is so important in, in, any, in any society, and it, it's, uh, um, it's too valuable to be left over to the businessman, you know. So there's a combination of, of the... Can I quote? I was recently in Budapest and, and the former yes. president of the EU parliament had a wonderful, inspiring speech. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just tell, why you, uh, well, were the, you in Budapest? I was in Budapest for... Um, there is a, a, a big uh, association of European and... Not only European, I should, but mostly European schools of music, um, many, many, uh, 250 schools or so. Oh. Yeah. So he said something right along these lines. He said in his opening speech, culture is not an ornament. It is a key sector in every developed and balanced economy. And European higher music education is one of our main assets in the globalized world. I think that sums it up very well. First of all, we do need culture and art and the beauty, but, but it should be a very integrated part in, in, a, in as I said, in a balanced economy. This, you won't get a good society without good, good culture. You know? And we have to train our, our uh, young students today to, to think along those, those lines also, not only about the wonderful music, but how to, use their knowledge uh, to be a good citizen when they can come out of school, you know, to use their talent and their, uh, their um, abilities f for the good, you know, not only for themselves, but for society as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as we said, we were talking about the value of culture. Mm. And uh, you, you think also, if you think that uh, um, Mozart in Salzburg 
the city of uh, Mozart, Mozart is still living out of it. I mean, so out of this uh, wonderful music. Yeah. So if we, we could really work on how to find out how to do that. And you are, I saw when I came here, we are at the uh, Musikhoek Schola that you are, yes. uh, where you are the vice principal. Yes. So and I saw that you are really uh, building uh, all new, the new campus. Yeah, finally. Uh, yeah. yeah. What are you, your plans related to well, this? Well, it will be, hopefully, uh, we're doing a, a large fundraising uh, um, project for this now. But the, the state, the state of Sweden is building the house, but we have to finance a lot of the infrastructure. So we're working hard to raise uh, more money. But uh, it looks good. We're getting good, good uh, help from big foundations and private persons. But our aim is to build a school that's very, very state-of-the-art when it comes to technology, acoustics. Um, because as I said, music today is not only Western art music. There's so much more. There is uh, you know, rock and pop music, electronic music. There is uh, um, internet, film music. And we, we do all of these these aspects of music in this school. So hopefully uh, next year when we inaugurate the house it will be uh, something that they, people from all over the world will come and look at. Our, our aim is very high. Our ambitions are to build <coughs> really the, the, the most modern music school in the world. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> we, there will be four concert halls one big symphony hall with adjustable acoustics and where you could, the floor can be raised, you know, all this stuff. Six recording studios, um, a chamber music hall, a hall for, for amplified music, a black box where you can do experiments with dance, light, music. So uh, a platform for, for creative, talented young people. You know, it's very exciting. And I'm very much involved in this project, you know, to, to raise all the money needed. Um, so now then, a, a, a simple question, but maybe, you know, people that are not so much inside uh, the field like you are, they really sometimes wonder why is it, uh, uh, why it is like that, that music is so important? Why is music so important for human beings? <sighs> I think music, it's, uh, they say that before the word, there was the music. So before we could speak, we could, we had rhythm, we could communicate with sounds, with drums, or whatever, you know. I think it's deep, deep inside our brain, music touches us in all cultures. Music, singing, and with singing comes dancing. And, and with music comes words. I think music is a very, very, very basic need for for human beings. You know that goes back to the time of the dinosaurs. You know. Um, I think it's very deeply embedded in our brain um, the sense of rhythm and, and, and singing and harmonies. And of course, in many different, and then we have so many different aspects of music then. Pop music, memories of songs you heard, or listen to a wonderful symphony by Gustav Mahler. It's, it's the epitome of what society could create, right? The grand symphony, the, with, with a wonderful symphony orchestra. This is the utmost of civilization, I would say or a hard rock band, or uh, folk music or from Bulgaria or Iceland. You know, there are so many wonderful aspects of music making that touches people. I feel sorry for, for those people who, who don't feel anything, you know. But most people, they dance, they can sing a tune. Mm. I think it's a very, very important aspect of a good society healthy musical life in all its aspects. Mm. 
And what is so special in Sweden that uh, you are now uh, so um, planning and, and supporting and finding and building such a wonderful campus or a place in order to educate many young people and to uh, propagate yeah. much good music? But I what I makes Sweden so special? Well, I don't know if it's more special than the rest of Europe. I think in Europe the, the tradition of, of Western art music is very, very important. Um, and S Sweden is a, a very prolific producer of music in many, in many um, genres. Um, we have wonderful producers, you know, pop producers. They write pop songs and, and to, to big stars. We have fantastic uh, songwriters. Um, Singers, opera singers from Sweden are amazing. We have a choir tradition, and a folk folk music tradition. It's very, very important. I think generally music is, this is a quite a musical society. Um, we have uh, quite a number of music colleges. This is the largest one, but there are uh, all over Sweden uh, good schools. And uh, only here in Stockholm we have well, three full symphony orchestras. And it's not a big city, it's about a one million. And chamber music series. And, uh, no, it's, it's, we have a healthy cultural life, I would say, when it comes to music. Mm -hmm. So um, um, if someone would like uh, you know, to follow and, and do what you are doing, um, can you can you just describe one day of yours, or one week, if it's as easy. a musician or as an administrator? It, no, all, to, all, all, all together, together. Because if you have the, both, all these positions, yeah. you have in a way to. No, cope but with I, I here I teach. Mm. <coughs> here I teach uh, three days a week, three and a half days a week okay. or so, um, from about ten o'clock to six o'clock in, in the evening. Um, the rest of the week I try and concentrate on practicing on my own and also some administrative job here. Um, being vice principal I have to sit in on a lot of meetings and of course this new building takes a lot of time. Uh, and I, I drive my two daughters to uh, another music school, a kind of a conservatory and I help, help a few kids there too. They're much younger but I teach I teach some of them who I know want to continue in, in higher learning. Uh -huh. and, um, and then once in a while I go on a tour um, playing concerts. I, I try not to be away too much though. Uh, and I love to play chamber music. I, I um, uh, have to rehearse with my colleagues to prepare for the concerts and tours. So it's, it's a busy schedule, mm -hmm. but ah. everything is circles around the music and, mm -hmm. and that's a wonderful life. But it's interesting that you have to separate the three days, uh, so you cannot do in between. So you really Sometimes have to separate. Sometimes I have, I have, a, I have an yeah. hour or two yeah. on my own and then I, then yeah. I work on my own. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's interesting that you have really to to take the time yeah. to, to do both. No, of course, you yes. cannot uh, mix them up. So it um, seems that uh, you have been really uh, working and having already very much impact on your, let's say, environment, musical environment. But if you could, uh, what would you improve? What, is there something that uh, you could do better? I mean, as a person, as a principal, as a Swede, as a Human being, citizens, oh. father. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tricky question. I think we, I, I try and do better all day. I mean, as a musician, I can always refine playing. You know, there is a, it, it's a never-ending story. You, know? you you play a concert and you go back home and you practice again. It goes on and on and on. So that, that's that's. Uh, yeah, th there is a constant process of improving that. As a teacher, I'm sure I'm, I'm learning every day. 
how I think, how to communicate, how to really listen in to my students. It's very, it's a, it's a difficult job. And not to have them imitate me, but have, try and have them find their own personality. It's, a, it's a not very easy job always. Very inspiring, but it's, it's, it's hard to be a good teacher. I have a question related to the music performance itself. I, I wonder, you know, music or a performance, a concert, or uh, a, yeah, a, a performance of yours, uh, is something that um, if you don't record it, it's finished when it's mm. finished, and you cannot repeat it again. Um, is there also a kind of sadness when you're finished or...? or uh... Uh, no, I'm used to that. I think most musicians are used to it. It's wonderful also to be able to say, yeah, this happens now, but never again, you know. Sometimes I wish I recorded some concerts that I, were, uh, that I was happy with. But it's like, you know, you tell a story, a concert is storytelling for me. You go out there and you, you try and tell a story to the audience. And then it's over. And hopefully the audience received not only beauty or it's but something to think about or to talk about. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you have told us so many fascinating things. Uh, what is most important to you? In my job? No, about what we have said until now. What is the core of the story? <laughs> I think the, the core is uh, passion and the need to go deeper with your, with your talent, with your abilities, to really, really explore your, what you're capable of. You know? and, and to use this for... for uh, for the good of society, I think it's an important aspect. Oh. And would you, what would you like to say to children or young people that are interested in a career in uh, music? For, well, practice. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's more than that. But it, it, not to give up, because practicing, you know, this, this craft can be very tiring. But to make sure you have a teacher you love and you respect and look up to, you know. Nowadays, young kids, they don't look up to teachers anymore. It's to these idiots on TV or in Facebook or so. But to really, if you get a good teacher, have fun with him and try and learn what he can tell you and, mm. and be open for, for inspiration. And uh, it, all these hours of practice, it's worth it in the end. You will be very happy with being able to play an instrument on any level. It's a wonderful thing to have, to be able to do this. It's like um, your, whole, your whole personality, your whole persona gets, gets larger, of course, when you can also express yourself with an instrument. And what would you like to say to the parents? of the children or young kids <laughs> yeah. interested yeah. in a career yeah. in, in music? No, but not, not to be on their case all the time, but uh, gently make them practice it's, and, and support them, maybe uh, take them to lessons and be... No, but to give them support and love and appreciation, you know. And, and um, also it's important for them to uh, realize that it's a wonderful gift to have if, 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 if you're musical and you want to learn an instrument is, is a fantastic thing. So in the end, what does really matter in life? Ooh la la. Uh, what matters in life is passion and love. Thank you very much. Yeah, are you happy? Yes, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you.